Retail never really returned, which has been one of the interesting things. It's been one of the really um, confusing things about the market, I think, for a lot of people is because Bitcoin went to all time highs, mm -hmm. but we never really saw the, the return of retail. As people were focused more on Bitcoin. And we have to think about why. When the Fed raises rates and they're going through quantitative tightening, people are going to flee to the lower risk assets within each asset class. It's the same reason why you had the Magnificent Seven, right? It's the same reason why money poured into those is because as you get into the tighter monetary policy, you want to go into the safer assets that you actually think have a good chance of surviving that tighter monetary policy. Look, I, I think inflation plays a huge role. Obviously, I think the markets are trying to sniff out if the Fed's actually going to engineer a soft landing um, and get inflation durably back to 2%. There's obviously the two extremes. They, they run the risk of a second wave of inflation if they repeat the 1970s. They run the risk of a deflationary crash if they repeat the 1940s. So it's you know it's it's a fine line for the for the Fed to walk. I think the main thing, some of the main things outside of the macro side that are driving the markets are um, you know things we've talked about on here before, Bitcoin dominance. Benjamin Cowan is a well-known figure in the cryptocurrency space. Recognized for his analytical approach to the markets and his focus on long-term trends. With a background in engineering and a PhD in nuclear engineering, Cowan brings a data-driven perspective to his analysis, particularly when it comes to Bitcoin and Ethereum. In this video, Cowan suggests that inflation has been keeping Bitcoin prices lower than expected. As the market anticipates the Federal Reserve cutting rates at the FOMC meeting in September, Cowan believes this could improve liquidity and potentially drive Bitcoin prices higher. He also draws a comparison between the current chart and that of 2019, suggesting similarities between the 2024 and 2019 market trends. Cowan analyzes Bitcoin's dominance, which has consistently ranged between 40% and 70%, as a key indicator of market sentiment and Bitcoin's strength relative to altcoins. As we bring you more clips from the interview, Please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel to help us reach more viewers. Don't forget to turn on post notifications to stay updated with our latest content. Share your thoughts and observations in the comment section below. Thank you and enjoy the video. Uh, and that's essentially looking at like altcoins on their Bitcoin pairs and, and assuming their oscillators at best. Uh, I think that plays a huge role. And then I also think, you know, the Fed's reaction function to, you know, to inflation and everything, you know, when do they actually cut rates and by how much? I think a lot of that does uh, does ultimately play a role in in where Bitcoin price action will will ultimately go going into the end of the year. Because, I mean, so far, uh, the ETFs haven't really been able to lift Bitcoin, um, you know, much higher for the last half year or so. OK, I remember speaking to you uh, in prior months and uh, last year as well. Let me, share, let me just show my screen and I'll let you share yours as well. Uh, this is uh, Bitcoin versus the NASDAQ. The narrative used to be simple. The Bitcoin price closely correlated with tech stocks. That diverged significantly this year. As you can see from the screen here, the purple line on my screen is the NASDAQ. Interestingly, though, Ben, if you overlay Bitcoin to the Russell, again, not perfect, but closer correlation than with the NASDAQ. So I'm again, I'm just making my interpretation. I'll let you answer this um, on your own. But it seems to me, Ben, that the Bitcoin price is still roughly in line with some risk assets. It's just that the large tech stocks, the Mag 7, have just been having their life a, a life of its own. And so that's diverged from the rest of the market. But Bitcoin still tracks stocks. I think crypto in general is further up the risk curve uh, than, you know, a lot of other risk assets, which is why they tend to do very, very, very well when market conditions allow for it. And they also tend to sell off sooner than other asset classes uh, referring to cryptocurrencies. It is true. I mean, if you look at let me go ahead and share my screen here. One of the things that I've I've looked a lot at are you can look at correlation coefficients, right? And and this is a, a Pearson correlation coefficient matrix uh, between you know TMC's total market cap. You got Bitcoin, ETH, the S and P, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, DXY, and then various precious metals as you go further and further out. And so you can see that Bitcoin over the last 60 days has been very highly correlated to other cryptocurrencies, but it hasn't really been correlated to equities, except for maybe the Russell 2000, as you mentioned. And it's been inversely correlated to precious metals. Now, I think a lot of people think that this is something that Bitcoin hasn't seen before. But in, in reality, this is almost identical to what happened to Bitcoin in 2019. I mean, this is big, the, the Bitcoin chart overlaid with the, uh, the NASDAQ. 
if you look at what essentially happened in 2019, the Fed cut rates in July. So let me just overlay U.S. interest rates onto the chart so we can all see that. So this green line is interest rates. You can see that as the Fed cut rates, Bitcoin diverged from the NASDAQ. Um, and of course, it did pick up the following year, but not until the last rate cut and 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 not until QE began. Uh, and that began, I believe, starting in, in Q3 of 2019. And that's when Bitcoin finally started to go back up. Of course, we did get the pandemic, which, you know, it's hard to predict stuff like that. But yeah. that's ultimately what happened. And so if you look at it now, you can kind of see the same thing happening, right? I mean, Bitcoin has diverged here from from the Nasdaq. And it, it still gives me sort of like flashbacks of what ultimately happened in 2019, where Bitcoin shows weakness um, well before the equity market does. What caused the first initial drop? Because keep in mind, the stock markets continued to grind up higher throughout 2021. It wasn't until 2022 or late 2021 that we saw a coincident decline in the stock market. So what caused the first drop in Bitcoin? One of the interesting things about Bitcoin is, you know, we can always come up with a narrative for, for what's causing it, right? Yeah. Um, I generally think what happened in 2021 is this. So if you look at the last three peaks, right? Q4 2013, Q4 2017, and then Q4 of 2021. What's interesting is after a major top, Bitcoin then goes back to its 50-week moving average and then gets a dead cat bounce. That's what we saw in 2013. And then here you saw it in 2017 as well, back to the 50-week dead cat bounce. It almost seems like the real top in 2021 that had a lot more credibility was the april top and then this was just a a dead cat bounce that ultimately gave us new highs which was different than what we had seen in the last two cycles one of the things i like to track with bitcoin is is something that's called the uh, the risk metric and the reason i look at that is because again there's always a narrative for why you know why price has to go down or, or for to go up but actually in 2021, in early 2021, that's ultimately when the risk level for Bitcoin uh, went to the point, you know, the 0.9 to 1 risk band. And so normally after that, that's when Bitcoin sells off. Of course, there's going to be a reason for it. There's going to be a narrative. We could blame inflation. We could blame all sorts of things. But ultimately, I, I just think that the market got extremely overheated very, very quickly, probably caused a lot by, you know, um, Micro strategy was very vocal back then. Michael Saylor very vocal back then about being pro Bitcoin, adding it to their balance sheet. I think that just led to a lot, of, you know, a lot perhaps more quicker speculation uh, and more rampant speculation sooner in the cycle than we normally got. And I, I, I do think that when you go to those high risk levels, it warrants having a, a longer bear market, whatever the reason may be. Does it look like to you, does it look like that Bitcoin is currently repeating late 2021 cycle? I think, no. I, so I, I think we're actually uh, in 2019. I, I think it's more similar to 2019, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one reason, if you go look, uh, one of the one of the metrics that I follow is the social interest in the crypto space. So this is called the social risk. And mm -hmm. it's essentially made up of like people that watch crypto YouTube channels, people that watch uh, or they subscribers. Actually, if I if I just pull it up so you can actually see the chart uh, before I, I show you the risk level for it. Here is uh, YouTube views to, I don't know, some 20 or 30 maybe more crypto YouTube channels. Um, so it just takes a moment to load because it is quite a bit of data. But when it does load, essentially what you'll see is that back in 2021, when we had these this mania phase, you can see that a ton of people were piling in uh, to watch YouTube uh, and watch crypto YouTube, yes. right? And, and and actually these, these channels over here were averaging at the time about 4 million views per day. Now those same channels are only averaging around 850,000 views per day. So we're not at the extreme level of, of sort of social speculation that we saw back in 2021. But what it, what it does look similar to, if you go back and you look at the social risk, which does take into account this chart as well as four other charts, you can see that social risk came down to a low and then it bounced. And then it's just kind of down here. It looks very, very similar to me like 2019, right? So I don't really think that what we just experienced was a 2021 style mania phase just because we retail never really returned, which has been one of the interesting things. It's been one of the really um, confusing things about the market, I think, for a lot of people is because Bitcoin went to all-time highs, mm -hmm. but 
we never really saw the, the return of retail. And, and again, one more piece of evidence to suggest that 2019 is not the worst comparison is it's actually a very similar move in terms of percent. Uh, if you were to take a, a price range from the low in 2018 till that 2019 top, about a 350% rally, same thing we just saw. Uh, you know, in, in for, from from the rally in, in 2022 until early 2024. So it still gives me those, you know, the the sort of the thoughts of, hey, what if this is just kind of like 2019 where, where Bitcoin goes up, but one of the main reasons it's going up is because, I mean, you have the ETFs, of course, I'm not trying to, to, to yeah. minimize that, but one of the main reasons it's going up is because Bitcoin dominance is going up. So people are converting their alts into Bitcoin and that's that's taking Bitcoin higher. And it's one of the reasons why Bitcoin put in new all time highs and most altcoins have not. What does Bitcoin dominance mean for you? And are you taking advantage of it? Bitcoin's dominance, the percentage of the total crypto market it represents, is a key indicator for investors. It typically rises during market downturns as investors turn to Bitcoin for stability and declines during bullish periods when altcoins gain traction. High dominance suggests a focus on Bitcoin for safety, while lower dominance may highlight opportunities in altcoins. Investors use this metric to guide portfolio allocation, manage risk, and assess market sentiment. Although Bitcoin remains a foundational asset, shifts in dominance can reveal emerging trends and opportunities in the broader crypto market. Currently, Bitcoin's dominance stands at 63%. We'll see how this changes as the Federal Reserve holds its September FOMC meeting with rate cuts on the horizon. Let's get back to more clips from the video. Currently trading around the 2019 level. And if you look at the charts, uh, the Bitcoin dominance continued to grind up into 2020. Um, it, it was interesting, though, because Pre-2017, the Bitcoin dominance was nearly 100%. And I guess the introduction of alts um, around 2017 brought that down to about 30%. Um, you know, it, 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 was there another reason? Um, it, ben, I mean, it, Bitcoin used to be the entire big, uh, crypto market. Is that one day going to happen again? No, I don't think so. I, I think there's room for Ethereum and, and many other cryptocurrencies. I just think that... Uh, Bitcoin dominance is potentially, you know, like an oscillator to some degree. But I actually, I don't really think it's going back up to 70%. My my target on Bitcoin dominance has just been 60%. And the reason for that is because I basically think that when, when you get these major alt seasons that occurred in, in 2021, um, a lot of times when, you know, when you get these breakdowns, the metric will then slowly go back up to the point of the breakdown. Um, and in fact, you know, I, I think that Bitcoin dominance will make that final move as early as September or as late as December. I mean, I think it's the same same thing, slightly different narrative. Basically, when you're, I, I think what you said makes a ton of sense, and I, I think that that is actually what's happening, right? But I would also argue that happened four years ago too. It was just that instead of ETF flows, it was just people were focused more on Bitcoin, and we have to think about why. When the Fed raises rates and they're going through quantitative tightening, people are going to flee to the lower risk assets within each asset class. It's the same reason why you had the Magnificent Seven, right? It's the same reason why money poured into those is because as you get into the tighter monetary policy, you want to go into the safer assets that you actually think have a good chance of surviving that tighter monetary policy. And so I think that's what drives it, right? I think that's what drives it. And essentially, you know, you basically have three years of the cycle where Bitcoin takes more market share and and we've seen that we saw it in 2022 2023 and now 2024 it is a good narrative but i do think like anything all those narratives will eventually come to an end and this is someone who's been preaching the bitcoin dominance thing for three years i do think dominance will go down in 2025 it's the same time it always goes down it went down in 2021 and it went down in 2017 and i think it's going to be on the back of loose monetary policy i think that um the ETF flows and whatnot are, are going to be used as justification as to why dominance won't go down. But I, I do think that as loose monetary policy arrives, people will start to feel uh, that, that risk appetite go up. I still think we're a few months away from that, right? We still haven't even had our first rate cut yet. But if we fast forward, you know, out to January 2025, we probably had a few rate cuts. Maybe the Fed stopped QT and, and, and perhaps people feel more risky in the altcoin market once again. That's our video for today. We hope you found value in Cowan's analysis. We'd love to hear your thoughts, 
share your comments and observations in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with others. Thanks for watching.